I'm going to be giving you a rundown on how to choose the perfect plates for your home gym and why weight isn't just weight, bro, and how these plates affect your training. I'm Kayvon, founder and CEO of Bells of Steel, and these are all the weight plates we sell. I'm going to break this down into two components because there's uh, generally just two major types of weights you can get. So there's the classic and less expensive iron plates and the more expensive, better looking, kind of depending on who you are, bumper plates. So the core reason that you're going to want to use bumper plates is number one, you regularly perform Olympic lifts. So whether that is a clean and jerk and snatch or just cleans and you are dropping on a frequent basis from your shoulder height uh, or above head and you need you know, rubber plates that are not gonna destroy your floor and destroy the plates themselves. So if you are consistently doing those type of movements, these are critical. The other main reason a lot of people buy them from Bells of Steel is simply the sound and vibration reduction. So if you're training at home, even if you're just doing like deadlifts, when you drop that bar with iron plates on them, it will vibrate through your house, it'll make noise, bother your neighbors, wake up your baby, uh, all kinds of stuff. So a lot of people want the bumpers to, to reduce that noise, even if they do have mats or even if they have a platform and they're just doing you know, deadlifts or some not Olympic style lifting and dropping their bar. The third main reason you want to get bumper plates is the aesthetics themselves. So a lot of people like the look of them. They are a consistent size, no matter the weight. So standardized size, all of them are the same height, just different diameters. And yeah, they kind of look cool. So those are kind of the top three. When it comes to iron plates, the main reason you want to buy them is they're like, depending on what style you get, 40, 50, 60% cheaper than a bumper plate. And I'll use throughout this video, iron and steel plates synonymously. Iron and steel plates are, are essentially, the, they are the same thing. They're just, those two words are used interchangeably when it comes to plates. So the number one is saving money. Number two reason you want, might wanna buy iron plates is that they have a thinner profile so you can fit more on your barbell depending on the bumper plate style you buy the plates can be quite thick so you can you know if you're a super buff dude like me you might max out your uh, barbell with if you're using 45 pound bumper plates and some bars like our trap bar which i'm not going to change if you're going to ask but it has shorter sleeves on it so it works well with trap bar that lifts especially because you know people often will max out uh, of a bar sleeve length on a trap bar and not only do they have a thinner profile but they're also shorter too so like a 45 pound iron plate is the same as any size bumper plate but if you get into 35 25 10 etc they, they shrink down so if you're storing your plates say on your rack where vertical space is important then you can fit more plates on that vertical space on your rack the only other reason you'd want to buy iron plates are kind of more specific to each plate themselves, like the style of plate. So I'll dig into that when I go over to the individual overview of the iron plates. Yeah, with that explanation of the overall plates, I can't wait to uh, tell you more about the different types of bumper plates we sell. So this isn't the full spectrum of everything that's available on the market but it's a pretty good representation. And so you'll see from most expensive to least expensive, we've got your urethane plates, your competition plates, your colored rubber bumper plates, and then your two uh, black virgin style dump bumper plates and the crumb plate. So with the urethane and the competition, they share a lot of similarities. The key differences between these two is number one, uh, the urethane is totally odor free. So there are customers we have who uh, maybe have a gym or a school or some sort of public institution that has like a scent free environment and they'll often you know, shell out that extra cost for the urethane. The core benefit of the competition is that they are kind of replicas of what you would use in an IWF Olympic weightlifting competition. Very accurate down to the gram uh, weight tolerance. And inside this hub here, you can see that there's little kind of slugs that help calibrate 
the weight more accurately, and whereas the urethane is just kind of, it is a nicer collar insert than the typical rubber ones, but it's not calibrated like that. The other two, the rest of the, the plates share, like I said, a lot of similarities. They both are very dense and have very low bounce back rates. So a lot of people like that because when you, you know, drop from overhead, the, the urethane competition bumpers, they'll just, you know, bounce up a little bit. Whereas if you get down to like a crumb, which is made of recycled rubber, it'll have a really high bounce and you could, you know, potentially even hit yourself on the chin when you drop your barbell. It's certainly happened before. So people like that low bounce. And then moving down the line, these three, sh again, share a lot of similar properties. The core difference with the colored rubber bumper plates is just that, the color. So they're more aesthetically pleasing. It's easy to identify them, you know, when you're picking out your weights. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes on our training, I'm like, oh, is that a 45 or 35? Like, it's very clear. And, and that's something that's shared across these three. So even though these ones are just rubber, uh, they do share that similarity that the different sizes are color coded. Uh, the difference between these two and this one is that it is, it is made with rubber, so it's, uh, it does have a, a mild odor to it, a higher bounce rate, it's a bit of a cheaper material. It is more expensive than these ones simply because those different colors you know, cost more, you're, you're ordering less of them at one time, so it does add to the price, but a great selection for people who like the aesthetic of it and that easy identification factor. When you, moving into these two, uh, these two actually share quite a few similarities. So, so this pure black bumper plate, these are both version rubber, black. Um, during the uh, COVID pandemic, uh, the peak of it, inventory was like really hard to get from our factories and suppliers. And anything we could do to like speed up the process of getting our product, we want to do, of course, not affecting the safety of it. So these ones, you can see they don't have colored letters on them. So those letters are actually hand painted. So of course that slows down the production process, which we're trying to speed up. And of course to increase cost because it has to be hand painted. The reason you'd want that, again, aesthetics, easier to identify, uh, but otherwise these two are, are quite similar bit of grade difference in the rubber used, but yeah, similar bounce rate, uh, more of a dead bounce than a crumb, but less a, more, a higher bounce than the urethane or competition. So that's kind of those two core summed up. And then getting into the final one, the crumb bumpers. Um, these crumb are kind of, I think they're the first bumper plates to really go mainstream and they're made of recycled rubber. They uh, bounce really high, so that can be good for people who are training without a platform. They don't want to damage their concrete floor. It, they're typically seen in uh, popular with uh, with functional fitness. I won't say the, the C word because if you say it three times, their lawyers will pop up in your DMs and send you a cease and desist. Uh, but uh, yeah, popular in kind of boxes and more functional fitness type places, you'll see them more common. A lot of people like them because of the look, the high bounce. A lot of people don't like them um, because of look and high bounce and they're quite uh, thick. So they're the same, these are all the same weight. These are all 25 pounds or 10 kg. And this one would be the thickest of them all. So again, if you're, if you're pulling, you know, 400 pound deadlift, your sleeves are gonna be full. So that's a, an overall rundown on our bumper plates that Bells of Steel sells and kind of the market as a whole. I'll move into the iron side now. So again, we have, this is all 25 pound plates. So you can see, you know, a stark difference between the diameter of these plates. And I'll touch on that diameter real quick because I forgot in the bumper plates, that diameter is really important because when you're competing in Olympic lifting, you have to be starting from the same range, no matter what you're cleaning and jerking or snatching. So that's a standardized 450 millimeters diameter. When it comes to the iron plates, to give you an overall rundown from least expensive to most expensive, uh, first we have your, one of our, our biggest seller, which is the Mighty Grip plates. And these are just your standard run of the mill iron. You'll see other brands having these. They, in the pre-pandemic days, were let, like a dollar a pound for like decades. I don't know, inflation didn't affect them somehow, but the dollar a pound days are long gone. 
I really wanted to create a better iron plate. I know a lot of you out there, like I said earlier, just think that weight is weight. I am, I guess, more of a refined man when it comes to that. Uh, I, I want my plates, I want my whole home gym to be as uh, functionally and aesthetically pleasing, you know, as I see fit. So when I started production of these plates, I spent a lot of time ensuring that they were an accurate tolerance. Uh, you'll see this commonly on lower grade iron plates is the weight accuracy is totally off. So in my uh, few decades of lifting, I shouldn't date myself, uh, you'll see that I would often see it like your local rec center or wherever, you know, they'd spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on their cardio equipment and then their plates and bars would just be you know trash and the plates i've seen plates 45 45 pound plates with as much as a five pound difference down or up so you might have you know if you load three plates aside that and you know on one side your 45 pound plate is 50 pounds and on the other side your 45 pound plate is 40 pounds you're getting into pretty big variances that could lead to uh, serious injuries potential and just like not a good training so i was very committed to ensuring even our most basic ones had a very tight tolerance three percent if you weigh these on a scale yourself uh, you'll see that they they come in with that tolerance you know 99.9 .9 time percent of the time and i also wanted to put handles on them uh, that's another kind of downside of other plates and bumper plates. I personally really like the handles. I like to be able to easily get them on and off of a, a tree or plate pegs. And, you know, it's kind of a nice touch. It makes your, your training experience a lot better. And then with these, we went with a, a really high-end um, hammer tone coating and we mill the edges so you'll see on the edges of these plates they're milled and they're accurate and they all have very accurate diameter that's another thing you'll see with the cheap iron plates not only will the weight be off but like you'll sometimes have a 45 pound plate that's supposed to be 450 millimeters and instead it's like you know 400 it's five centimeters off and another one is 500 uh you know 500 millimeters and again creating really unbalanced unpleasant training experience so that's our basic one and you know put a lot of a lot of thought into it uh, going into the next one is our machined iron plates so the core difference between a machined and our kind of beginner mighty grip plates is primarily the tolerance so while these are three percent within range these ones are one percent in range so they're extremely accurate and that becomes more important as your training gets more sophisticated but if you're competing in powerlifting it becomes even more important and so these are a bit more expensive than these ones but the weight tolerance is really good the hole tolerance is really tight as well. So when you, I don't know if you've ever noticed this before, when you're training with plates, sometimes there's a lot of slop, you call it, between the difference of the barbell sleeve diameter and the plate hole diameter. And so if you're pulling a deadlift or something, you'll feel that, I mean, you should pull the tension out of your deadlift, but you'll feel that kind of snap back and it's just kind of sloppy and rattly, not ideal. The Mighty Grip does have a tighter tolerance than say a normal run of the mill, you know, cheapo plate, but the machine plate is like tight. They stay on very well and don't shift around a lot. And then of course these are, so to get that tolerance, the plate needs to be milled. So not only is the edges milled, the back of the plate is milled. So it kind of has a bit of a cool aesthetic to it and, you know, very accurate weight. Tolerance. The next one is an example of an e-coat. So these are a hammer tone finish, and this is an e-coat finish. This is a, a, a different process where the product, you'll see it on kettlebells, plates, occasionally barbells. It'll be dipped into like a vat, and then through kind of a chemical process, it'll be coated uh, with a paint. It's extremely durable. It's a lot more expensive though, and it, it looks really sharp. So that's actually the only difference between these two. And then into the final one, which is our calibrated plates. And the calibrated plates are similar to the competition plates where they have an extremely high weight accuracy within just a few grams. And these again are a clone of what's used in a powerlifting competition. And when I say clone, uh, the plates that have you know, are used in competition have gone through a bureaucratic and expensive process of getting their plates established to be used in those 
competition. So it's a bit of a lengthy process, a bit of an expensive process, not something we felt was of value for our plates and would rather keep costs low than paying a year, an annual um, fee to have them uh, acceptable in certain federations. So these are, like I said, kind of a replica as far as diameter and weight tolerance and color goes. So a very similar feel to what you'll be experiencing in a competition. Great aesthetic to them too. Like the competition plates, they have different colors depending on the weight. So very easy to identify, extremely thin, which is nice. Again, you can load on lots onto your bar. But again, the small downside compared to like a Mighty Grip is they don't have that grip. They're kind of, they're a bit, they're a bit awkward to pick up and put on, what have you. So that is a rundown again of all the plates that Bells of Steel carries and an overall view of the market itself. If you uh, can't wait to get some of this weight for yourself, click on the link below, go to our website, check out and let the gains begin.